What's going on everybody? Ratchet Wrench is back for another video today and we got the GTI, the Mark V generation. This is the FSI engine and we haven't been posting a lot on it but because we've been really focusing on the um, Turbo Miata so if you're new to the channel definitely check that out. <laughs> But uh, today is going to be focused on this, and we're pretty much going to go over the top things that break and commonly fail on this generation uh, GTI. This goes from interior, engine bay, and then interior. We'll kind of break it down into categories, but uh, let's get into it. So first thing we're going to start is with the exterior. Uh, we're going to talk about the wheel arches. They commonly rust. I know it's prone to having a lower car and you know getting that rub and it will start rusting under it so just keep an eye out on that and a lot of people will put stickers over it to try and hide it or you know get a new fender but it's just it's prone to happen this car has about 110,000 miles and you can see it's starting to chip and uh, it's starting to rust on the inside which is not too visible that's pretty much it for the exterior there's not much that really goes wrong with this I mean yeah you have the normal stuff but I'm not gonna really get into that so we're gonna make our way into the engine bay all right, so let's jump into the engine bay. Open this bad boy up. All right, so as you can see, this is the FSI engine. This isn't the TSI. But one thing that's prone to happen to this FSI engine, if you don't maintain it properly, is you could really tear up the camshafts because with this high pressure fuel pump right here, there's a little cap. It's called a uh, cam follower. It's about $30. And you're supposed to change it every 20,000 miles just as a preventative maintenance because after time, the wear, it will kind of create a hole in that cap and it could just cause so much damage to the inside. All the metal shards could just, um, you know, get into your engine. Just It's a recipe for disaster. So definitely fix that. It's a cheap solution. There's three bolts to take this whole thing out. You just got to drop the fuel lines and just release the pressure in there. So let it sit overnight and do it in the next day. So like I was saying, they say to change it every 20,000 miles. If you have a tune on it, which is, you know, a pretty aggressive tune, like an APR Stage 2 or Unitronic or whatever companies are out there, you should change it every 10,000 miles just as a preventative caution because it, it tends to wear a lot quicker with everything turning and going a little faster. So moving on from that, you have the simple ignition coils. I know a lot of people upgrade to the R8 coils, which is the red ones. These are prone to failing. I've already replaced um, the whole set of coils about three times. And I've only had the car for about 40,000 miles. So that's just something to keep in mind. Yeah, you're gonna have that on most cars, you know, ignition issues. But for some reason on this FSI engine, they tend to fail a lot more commonly. Um, as you can see, I deleted the PCV valve. That tends to fail very easily. You could bypass that in a multitude of ways. You could either do a catch can, which will route it through here, or you could just do a PCV block off plate. Either or is a fairly simple and cheap process. We have a video on how to install this. I'll link that up above. But yeah, really just those stupid little things that go wrong. Now we're going to get into more of a, a major thing that is with the direct injection, the FSI and the TSI, you have carbon cleaning. You have that carbon buildup and you're supposed to do this every 40,000 miles of carbon cleaning on the intake manifold, which I have a very in-depth tutorial on that, which I'll link up above as well. Save yourself about $400 to $500 in just labor. But cleaning these, these intake valves, they get so built up with gunk and carbon and just so much shit that it, it really causes misfires. It could cause, you know, stalling, not getting the proper, you know, air flow through. It could just really destroy this engine and really destroy the performance of your vehicle. So that's something that definitely goes wrong. Of course there's stuff that will go wrong, but those are not as common as these ones because every Mark V GTI owner can relate to these. Even the newer ones with the carbon build up, it's, it's something that's you know prone to happen. So one last thing I didn't mention is the timing belt. This generation, the FSI runs off the belt and then the TSI runs off the chain but the belt is prone to failure. You're supposed to change it every 100,000 miles. If you don't, man, you could fuck up the timing. You could really destroy this engine and it could just be a recipe for disaster. Um, same with the chain. You're supposed to change that every um, 100,000. I did this timing belt around 83,000, just a little preventative maintenance. And it's still, ha like when I removed it at that early, it had some rips in it and some tears. So just want to give a heads up. If Don't always go by the book, do it. Maybe premature just to be safe and that's an expensive job I did do that myself on the ground in a driveway so you can do it yourself but it's easier to just take it to the shop if you want to do that way but uh, unfortunately I didn't make a video on that there's a bunch of write-ups online and 
forms and stuff like that to follow. So let's make our way onto the inside. So we're gonna make our way to the inside of the vehicle. First thing and foremost I'm gonna point out is the electrical switches, the power windows, they fade. I don't know if you guys have been following us, but we listed a video where it's top five things I hate about this vehicle. And between having the window open and having the water um, run down this and go right onto the, the control panel there along with the sunlight. So I actually ended up getting tints. If you don't have tints, the sun is literally beaming on that and it just turns the color from it's supposed to be like a red, it's not even red anymore. Those are a common thing that fades. It's not really a big deal. Personally, I don't mind it, but it's just something that will go wrong. And same with on the passenger side. As you can see here, I have different upholstery on uh, the door card, the door panel. Along with the headliner, they put way too much fabric in this generation. So it stretches and then starts sagging. Notoriously, the headliner sags. I ended up redoing that myself and put a whole different um, color. I put red to match the stitching and the plaids and just the red trim everywhere. I will link up a video on how to do all the cards, the door panels. Kind of intuitive, but um, definitely I know everyone starts peeling from the side corners and then the headliner is notorious. So really there's not much interior wise that's common to fail other than your basic you know stitching or other little miscellaneous shit there's nothing really prone to failing in there so we'll close that up and one thing that's not in the engine bay and not really in the exterior but more along the lines of the turbo i know the diverter valve tends to always fail a lot of people end up upgrading them to different style springs and then you can even put um, the forge like I have the atmospheric blow-off valve which pretty much just connects to the diverter and just atmospheric uh, pressure just dumps to the side that gives it that uh, whoosh kind of noise whoosh kind of noise but overall it's a very reliable car I know a lot of you have seen my video on why I drive this car and why it's very reliable if you haven't I'll click that up above but you just have those little odds and ends that are gonna fail along with you know stuff in the engine but it's it's common to happen with most vehicles and this is just more catered to what's gonna happen with the uh, GTI. So we're really gonna just end the video right here. Um, we hope you enjoyed, give it a big thumbs up, comment any questions, concerns, or comment down below what you guys have that fails on your, your GTI or even your Jetta, your GLI, anything like that. Um, and I'm curious to see if you guys have similar issues or anything like that, but we'll see you in the next video, peace.